Um, in today's video, I figured, seeing as I'm kind of uh, on hold with one project that's got my whole workbench kind of occupied, um, waiting for parts to arrive, that uh, maybe we do a bit of a, a look ahead at what's coming up and um, also I, I'm going to show I'm going to demonstrate um, this homebrew antenna tuner that I uh, whipped up um, we'll take a closer look at that and how it functions um, only because a, a user made a comment I have a, a different homebrew a, a more basic smaller one that I did a video on previously and um, I mentioned that I had made a better one and there was a mention of uh, a video showing it off so we'll do that that'll be something to kind of finish the video but I've got a lot of stuff here that I wanna um, hopefully well, we may not I may not touch on every single one of these things in a video but there's potential for videos here with a bunch of it um, so yeah, where to begin here? Uh, let's see. Well, let's start over where I'm sitting. So, these here, <laughs> uh, these are what uh, I guess. I mean, they're very, very large capacitors. Um, maybe the term, I don't know if these qualify as super capacitors, but they're pretty super, in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with that. Uh, you know, ten thousand, ten, ten k microfarad, ten thousand microfarad. So, uh, what do we need to hit a, a a farad? I think we would need a hundred thousand. Is that correct? Is my math right? I'm just quickly off the top of my head. Here's another 10,000 microfarad, um, up to 150 volt DC. Um, surge, it could take a, a quick surge of 175, it can handle, I guess, according to the label. Anyway, these are interesting. So, I got these for a ridiculous price. Um, I couldn't say no to it, and I don't have any particular use yet for them, but. The day may come where a project um, pops into my uh, brain and I have use for some of these or all of them. So that's a recent find. Oh, a bunch of this stuff is recent. I've uh, been scouting around and looking at for stuff and come ac came across a few things. So here I've got some... Uh, yeah, you're probably not going to see this too clearly. These are Marconi branded. Um, yeah, they're all Marconi branded crystals, radio crystals. Um, these are all, uh, well, no, they're not all. Three of the four of these are, are in the 40 meter handband, and one of them is in the 80 meter handband, 3720. 7290, 7210, 7060, which is the one I really, because I'm more, these days, at this point, right now, interested in um, CW, or Morse code, and so that falls right into the, right into the pocket, um, if I'm, you know, thinking of a project for, uh, for that, that would be very useful, um, and I got those for a very good deal, I think, so, those are fun. They're, you know, I, I haven't seen too many floating around, so when I see them, I, I tend to grab them. Um, what next? Oh, well, I mean, this is pretty cool. Or not. <laughs> Depending on your point of view. Uh, this, if you haven't already guessed it, is basically, uh, uh, what's it called? A Geiger counter. Uh, checking for radiation levels. Um, now, I haven't put a battery in it yet. I just got this. Um, we'll have a quick peek inside. We'll do a closer breakdown. It looks like it takes um, a big C or D. I can't really tell. 
I think a C battery. I don't know. Um, a 1.5 volt, just a little fashioned C battery. We'll do the job here. I might convert that to something more long term, uh, more modern. But anyway, great shape. Uh, again, I, I feel I, I got a very good price for this. Uh, uh, what's it? What's the other term? A dosimeter? Dosimeter? Um, fun to play around with. I've wanted one of these for forever. Why? Like, what an interesting thing to know or to, to observe and to be able to. The meter is calibrated. Well, eh, it doesn't matter. We'll get into that. That'll be its own thing. So that's something. Here I've got a couple of. Um, I don't know if they work, but literally for what I paid, it it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the, the the so little that it doesn't matter. If they don't work, I have a lot of wiggle room in terms of trying to fix them up. Both of these are the same idea. They're going to be like 13.8, 12 volt, it, you know, ish power supplies. Um, what are these for? Well when you're running a, a radio, radios are often designed to, to be multi-use so that you could take them out and somewhere and use them outside so the handy thing to be able to do is to run the radio off 12 volts. Most objects that we use in our lives run off of 5, 9, 12 volts anyway, mostly. Um, DC, but we don't have that coming in from the outside world, the wires and the poles don't deliver that to our home, so we need wall warts and adapters and power supplies. Uh, so that's what these things are. They are adapters. They are wall warts. They're just really hefty. They put out, um, you know, like this one is, I don't know, what's its amp? Does it even say? 10 amp. 10 amps. I don't know what this one is. Maybe it says on the side. It's very uh, home brewed. Um, 3.6 amps, uh, oh, oh no, I'm sorry, output 15 volts, 16 amps, so that's pretty solid, uh, that'll run a radio, I mean, that's in the ballpark, there's certainly larger power supplies, uh, available for bigger rigs when you start running more power, um, but those will be fun, that'll be interesting to break those down, see what's wrong with them, if anything, get them working, uh, and then put them into use. One thing I don't have right now, uh, sorry, I'm just going to check. i got to keep my eye on the battery. Um, yeah, we're good for now. As you can tell, it's a interesting day. It's very overcast, it's rainy, and I'm just trying to go with the, the lighting that's coming from outside. So it gives a kind of a, I like the lighting in terms of, uh, plus I have a, one extra light to try to boost it up a bit. So, where was I? Oh, um, recently have moved and I don't have a, an antenna up yet. So, oh that's one other thing. That's another thing. So, uh, this is another recent, I'll, I'll just talk about this right now. So this is uh, QRP Labs QCX Plus CW transceiver. This is a little, again, a, this would be a QRP, so, you know, 5 watts, give or take. Um, this, you know, looks for, this looks for 13.8 volts uh, ish, right? So that's, you know, when I'm inside. Now you can take this outside and run this off a battery pack or a, a, a car battery. Uh, they come in various sizes. They don't have to be massive car battery size. You can get smaller ones that'll that'll do it. So this is uh, just came in. I had this on back order. This is assembled from the uh, developer, and they ship them out as they make them. And uh, it took quite a while, but that's not a complaint. That's well worth it. I'm excited to to use that. So I'll put that in this pile as well. But what goes along with that? What goes along with that? I'll just add this in on the topic of ham radio is the additional QRP Labs 50 watt external amplifier that goes with this specifically and has the ability um, to be switched on and off um, as you're transmitting and then you're receiving it switches off comes out and so this is uh, excellent 
and it takes your 5 watts and we'll take it up closer to 50 so there's an enclosure and this is its whole own project um, the hardest part in this project is winding your own toroids because you know that is not something uh, most people, well I don't do it every day, some people are, well have certainly, well, many many people more than could, one could count in life. This is a 20 meter version by the way. Uh, 20 meter is good for my life um, mainly because the antenna requirements are modest. 20 meter and 10 meter ideally. Um, 40 meters gets a little cumbersome unfortunately. The, the antenna, a good, like if you just a simple dipole for 40 meters, quite a, quite a large antenna actually. So We'll put that away. So that's its own video. Whether or not I'm going to do it in such a way that I'm going to go through the process of assembling the kit or just sort of do it, maybe speed it up like people do so you can see me putting it together and then we'll actually get into the working and testing phase. <clears throat> but that's exciting. So there's that project. Put that to the side. Anyway, the, the, getting back to the, the issue of antennas. Um, 20 meter antennas don't have to be really really high in the air and they don't they don't have uh, demands in terms of dimensions the element lengths are very modest so it's a pretty great band but then there's other things about 20 meter it's um, you know your your window of use each day is is uh, it's not it's not a 24 hour band it's more of a daytime I have found maybe other people's People out there, you know, can attest to a different experience, but my experience tends to be available. The band is only open to me anyway uh, during the day, and it starts to fade as the sun sets, and uh, that's where 40 meters takes over. But 40 meter antennas are, like as I mentioned, they're, they're larger, and they should be ideally higher in the air. So the double requirement of height and overall dimension of the elements, uh, or if you're just going with some kind of N-fed version, the element, but still then you're dealing with a whole other slew of problems uh, when you do an N-fed that I don't generally care for. I just simple, I like a dipole. Um, you know, it works. <laughs> just get it to the right height, make sure the element lengths, tune it so you trim the, the each wire um, as needed so we'll get into that but that's um, another story so that's something I have to, to work on still uh, moving on though uh, let me just see where we're at here 13 minutes and quite a bit of battery okay try to keep this video to like 20 minutes this is an odd thing that I came across recently like uh, I think somebody this was at a local uh, second-hand retailer and uh, I think somebody just didn't know what it was missed it somehow because what for the price they put on this unless they knew it was broken um, in which case it's possibly useless to me but uh, I haven't even tried to power this up yet what it is <laughs> as far as I can tell from the website uh, this is meant to help a technician um, diet, like do troubleshoot or you know set up um, a wireless or not a wireless uh, camera system, security cameras. So you can actually take like this B and C is an input. This can take the output of a, a camera, and it this screen is a color it will actually show you the uh, what the camera sees right here, and then I'm sure it has various other functions. This is a Nonetheless, this is not a cheap thing. This is a specialty tool for a technician, and it was in a, just on a shelf. And I saw it, and for what the price was, I said, I can't, this, "I'd be nuts not to just take this, even though I know that I may not need it in my own life per se." It's interesting, and it's not a So, this is my. Oh, so maybe we'll, we'll do something on that. Um, this is my little uh, DIY. Home, well, it's not so little. This is the bigger one. 
with a roller inductor that was the main thing I got excited about on this project is the roller inductor um, having access to I actually have found a couple of them and, and this is one of them so two you know capacitor inductor combo plus um, another capacitor this is kind of uh, we'll, we'll talk about that functionality wise so moving on um, this is interesting this is something Clearly, this is homebrew, just the labeling and everything about this. This is a ham project that somebody built. What I think it is, you can see a transistor here. Um, uh, very minimal. There's a inductor, there's a coil here. There's a variable cap here. Battery. Again, it looks like a, this might be a C, if this is a C battery, the, the Geiger counter or dosimeter. Maybe if that's a D battery. I'm uh, just looking at the the um, dimensions here. So anyway, uh, da 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 da. This was well. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it was going in the garbage. So I said no. I'm not gonna. I will take that because if nothing else, there's some interesting parts. But what I think it might be. Looking at the entirety of it, it's not clearly marked. Well, it does say RF remote power meter. Okay. Remote power meter. And it shows 115 megacycles to 135 megacycles. So it's quite a high frequency measurement. That doesn't mean it doesn't work anywhere else. Usually what that would indicate is that that's its upper limit where you can kind of hope that it, you're getting, uh, it would stop being as useful above that. That could mean that it's not as accurate below that, that that's its ideal range. Um, nonetheless, RF remote power meter, but it kind of looks like a dip meter to me, like a, what they call a grid dip meter, what it used to be called that. Um, although we don't have, well no, we still have grids. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, uh, it's not a tube device, it's a solid state device, so um, interesting, uh, and, and how it works, and what it is, I still somewhat remains to be un un discovered there, so that's that's something to look at. This is just simple, I don't know, I just, you know, it's, it, it's a rectifier. It's not selenium, um, I was assured, although it looks like it would be, it's actually solid state. Um, I believe uh, it's made by General Electric and made in Canada. Um, pretty hefty rectifier, so that was that's a fun little find. Uh, and just finally, just wrapping up um, on the items quickly. This radio is also at a, a local uh, secondhand shop uh, chain of secondhand shops, um, and somebody must have missed on this because they've really lately up to their prices dramatically and they know what's what kind of I think these days and mark their items accordingly but they had this marked at a very very modest price and looking at it from the front it would appear to be just stylistically it looks like it's a solid state FM AM, AM FM radio in fact when you turn it around you see a tube chart <laughs> It is not a solid state, so that was fun to find. And at the price they were asking, I couldn't say no because I like restoring uh, old tube, uh, usually AM, but if this is FM AM uh, radios, maybe the first FM AM radio I've ever done. I did a Grundig once. No, that that might have been FM as well. Doesn't really change my, you know, what I'm doing. Unless somehow I have to troubleshoot the actual modulation, demodulation um, aspect of, of the device, which you probably... I've never had to do that. It's never come up. Um, nonetheless, uh, so yeah, so there is something that I'll, I'll, that'll be its own video, I would imagine, just a, a restoration. Hopefully I don't need to spend a... a one thing that starting to put me off doing these. I, I did a bunch of them at one time. It's just the price of the actual caps. These You need high voltage caps and um, they're a little pricey. They get a little pricey. So yeah, um, 
we'll see what's inside it. Uh, it's kind of modern. I'm thinking it's probably very much towards the end of the time that anybody used tubes. It's made by Panasonic, and it's a tube device. Now, that's unusual, but obviously it existed. <laughs> obviously Panasonic did this. You wouldn't, I wouldn't personally associate that brand name with uh, tube electronics, but there it is. So it clearly exists. The thing below it, that's the final thing. Another recent find, something I've wanted, one of these is brand WaveTech. I mean, they're just like known for like, this is very high quality items. Now, I don't know if it even works. Um, I don't have the proper power cord, so I'm going to have to either source one out or just adapt it to a modern uh, more available, readily available um, three-prong cord, what are they called, whatever they're called, IEC or whatever that, uh, you know, governing body is that uh, designed them. Anyway, so that's a great little thing. This thing has a massive, it, it also, well, it, it offers a variety of wave output, wave shapes, sine, triangle, square, and some pulses, uh, or more pulse type waves. Um, but it goes from like sub one hertz, so like a like a fraction of a hertz, like one hertz, which is so like point one, <laughs> zero point one hertz, I'm up to into the megahertz range. Um, so that's tremendous range. So this thing is an audio to RF signal generator, function generator, because it has sweep functions capability. So it's it's quite the machine. Really, here, this triplet, which I don't think I've ever done a video on, but I fully restored that. That is a tube device. This thing's great. Uh, works great. Uh, very very stable. Um, I recapped it, and uh, the tubes in it actually all function and, and uh, seem to be okay, so I didn't have to change any. I got that for... Anyway, you know, you gotta, you gotta dig. And sometimes, these days it's harder and harder because everyone's digging. And the more people who dig, the more things are found, the more things are found, the less things are left for others to find. That's just how it works, right? So the internet has kind of created that um, situation. Whereas at one time, stuff like this, you would people would want to throw this stuff away. Now it's, it's starting to shoot up in value because everyone wants one because of the internet and the fact that, you know, people are kind of led to believe, well, you've got to have one. I have these things doesn't mean you have to have them. <laughs> this, if you need a, a like a function generator, yeah, that's one example. You can also just go and buy a brand new one, digital, um, you know, and uh, they're not super expensive. So this is an old one. If it needs any kind of work, that could be a problem, depending on the kind of work it needs. So that that's a, a thing of its own. So that that is a little bit of a, a look ahead for you. Well. I don't know what, what's up with this camera or how to stop it. It just kind of has a recording limit and it just stops recording and you don't really know that it's done that. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I don't know where it cut off and I don't know where, what I was going on about when it cut off something. I'm pretty sure I said what I needed to say. So I'll just finish the video and say, you know, thank you for watching. Bye for now.